One of the most important tools for any low code builder is the loop. With a loop, you can process every item in a data set individually, no matter how many items are in that set. And you don't need to add several redundant actions to your automations to do it. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about loops in Zapier. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use low code automation and AI tools to help our clients and members create more time at work. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more automation tips and tutorials every week, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a loop in Zapier to process multiple items within an array. I'll also quickly show you how to create loops from text or numbers instead. I'll also give you a few general tips for using loops in Zaps. So let's get started. First, open up any Zap where you want to add a loop. At the very least, your Zap will need to have a trigger since there's no way to create a loop as part of the Zap's trigger. Feel free to add any actions or search steps before the loop to collect any data you might want to loop through. But the only thing that's strictly required is a trigger. Here in our example Zap, we've got a trigger that runs this Zap every Monday at 9 a.m. Then there's an Airtable search step that finds records in a project management database. This search step finds every person in the people table that has a task assigned to them. This little Airtable search formula is just checking to see if the tasks field is not empty. In other words, if there's a task assigned to them, the person will match our search. The results from this search will be the basis for our loop. We're going to use the loop to send a DM in Slack every week to anyone who has a task currently assigned to them. To add a loop to your Zap, add a new action and select Looping by Zapier. Note that you will need to have a Zapier Pro plan or higher to publish Zaps that include loops. If you're on a free plan, Zapier will let you add a loop to your Zap and test it, but it won't let you publish the Zap and turn it on. There are three options for how you can construct your loop. I'll explain the other two later in this video, but for now, let's just focus on create loop from line items. In JSON, which Zapier uses to structure data, a line item is an object that contains an array of objects. An array is just a list of comma-separated values. You might know it as a CSV. You might not always see them referred to in this way, but there are line items all over the apps that we use every day. In a Shopify order, there are likely line items making up the receipt. In a database app like Airtable, each record can be treated as a line item if it contains a multi-select field, or a linked record field that links to multiple other records. If your data isn't correctly formatted as a line item, you can use another Zapier formatter step to convert it. We've compiled some useful Zapier help docs in this video's resources board to help you understand how line items work if you're curious. That's linked in the description. Now let's return to our loop in progress. Whatever you choose as your data source, you'll need to provide at least one value set to loop through. For instance, I'll choose the name field retrieved from the Airtable search step, and I'll give the value set a title of name. I'll add another value set for the task count field. That data will let us tell each user how many tasks they have to complete. And I'll add one more value set for the Slack ID. This ID will let us dynamically send each message to the correct user in Slack. You can also set a limit for how many iterations your loop should run through. Each loop can run up to 500 times. Once you've added all the value sets that you want to loop through and configured your other settings, click continue. Then test your loop. In the test results, under preview loop values, you'll see the structure of your loop. Each iteration will include one instance of each value from your value sets. So each of our iterations includes a name, a task count, and a Slack ID, since those are the three value sets we created. Each iteration also includes an iteration number by default. So this is all the data that your loop will retrieve and process as it runs. Now let's add an action to use that data. To add an action to a loop, just click on the plus button after the loop step. Note that you'll see this rectangle around every action that's part of your loop. The search step that we run before the loop isn't part of it, so it will only run once each time the automation runs. Pick an app and event for your action. In our example, we're going to use Slack to send a direct message to each person referenced in the loop. In the Slack message, we'll include a personalized greeting for each user and a notice with the number of tasks that are currently assigned to them. When you're using dynamic data from a loop, 
be careful about which variables you pick. These variables that start with preview loop values will include data from several iterations. If you want to reference the data that belongs to a specific iteration, just use the variables that don't start with preview loop values. For instance, I'll use the name and task count variables. Now, I'll just finish this Slack message up with a few custom settings. Once your action is configured to your liking, give it a test. And here in Slack, we see the new message. Great. When you test an action in a Zapier loop, it will only process test data for the first iteration in the loop. It's not going to run test actions for every item. So even though my first step retrieved three records to loop through, testing the Slack step in the loop only sends one message, which is what I expected. If you want to confirm that your loop works as intended, you'll need to run a live test with the automation turned on. We'll do that after we add a filter to this loop and finish it off with a final step that only is performed once. If you want to add actions that only run once after your loop starts, just add a filter to your loop. Add an action, choose Filter by Zapier. The Zap will only continue past this filter when the data being processed matches the conditions that you specify here. We'll set the field to loop iteration is last. Then we'll change the condition to boolean is true. That means that the zap will only pass this filter if the current iteration is the last iteration in the loop. So any action you add after this filter will only be performed once after the loop has already iterated through the rest of your data set, no matter how long it is. I'll add one action after the filter. This will be another Slack message, but this will be a channel message that simply announces that the direct messages have been sent to certain users. In this case, I'll use the names retrieved from our Airtable search step. And once again, I'll quickly configure a few additional settings because emojis are fun. I'll skip the test for now. Instead, I'm going to do a live test of the full zap. I'll change the schedule trigger to run in just a few minutes from now. Then I'll publish the zap to activate it. After waiting a couple of minutes, I've got some new messages in Slack. Here's a DM for our first user, Sam Sample, a DM to our second user, Ellen Example, and a third and final DM for Matt Mock Data of the Manchester Mock Datas. Lastly, there's a single message sent to the tutorials channel listing all of these wonderful people who just received a DM. Perfect, our zap looped through our data and sent a DM once for each person, then cleared the filter on its final iteration and sent one channel message to finish up. This zap and its loops are all set. But before I wrap up this video, I wanna quickly explain your other two options for creating a loop and cover some frequently asked questions I get about Zapier loops a lot. Our example loop was created from line items, but there are two other ways you can create a loop, from text and from numbers. A text loop is very similar to a line item loop. However, instead of iterating through several pieces of structured data, it will loop through pieces of text. For the loop to work correctly, your text will need to contain a delimiter between each item, like a comma, a semicolon, or even a space if you wanna make things tricky. It doesn't really matter what the delimiter is, as long as it's consistent. You can't have some items separated by a comma and others separated by a semicolon. It just doesn't work like that. Overall, a text loop will work in basically the same way as a line item loop. However, a number loop is a bit different. When you create a loop from numbers, you won't be iterating on data from previous steps in the zap. Instead, you'll be incrementing a number in a set pattern. You can set how many times the loop will run, as well as the loop interval number. So if you'd like, your loop iteration number can increase by 5 or 10 each time instead of just 1. When it runs, the loop will just return its iteration number and repeat the steps you add to the loop. But that iteration number is all the data the loop itself will process. Number loops are useful if you want to perform the exact same action multiple times in your zap or if you want to use the loop as part of a calculation, but you'll probably be using the line item or text loop in most cases. Finally, let's finish this video with a quick rundown of some of the most common questions that people have about loops in Zapier. Question number one, can you add a loop within a loop in Zapier? Unfortunately, no. To do this, you'll need to write a custom code step. 
which is an entirely different subject that we're not covering in this video. But if you want to see a video about it, leave a comment down below. You could also add a loop inside of a subs app, but in my testing, it didn't seem to work very well or reliably as a method of adding a loop inside of a loop. If you add a loop before the return step, you'll get a warning that this isn't advised, and that warning will stop you from publishing the subs app. You can add a loop in the return step, but when I ran a test sending Slack messages, they all arrived in a bizarre, unpredictable order. Overall, I wouldn't recommend using subs apps to try to create nested loops. If any of you out there have any tips for using subs apps like this, let me know in the comments below. Question number two, how does task usage work in loops? The step where you create a loop doesn't consume a task. However, every action or search within your loop will consume tasks as normal. That means that each iteration will add to your task consumption. Loops are not a good way to try to circumvent your plan's task limit. And finally, question number three, can you use loops and paths together? Yes, but there are some limitations. Even when you're using paths, you're still limited to just one loop per zap. So you can only include a loop within a single path. However, you can add paths within loops. So you can add quite a lot of conditional logic to your loops if you want. Loops are a convenient and efficient way to process structured data in your apps. With a single loop, you can easily run dynamic actions for hundreds of pieces of data in just one automation. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. How are you going to use loops in your zaps? And are there any other advanced Zapier features you'd like to see us cover on the channel? Your suggestion could become one of our next tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.